Hi there students, welcome back again to another video lesson for uh, grade 7 mathematics quarter 4. So this will be our uh, third video lesson for uh, types of graphs that can be used to represent organized data. So yung unang dalawa na diniscuss natin is yung pie chart, yung pie graph, and then the second one is bar graph. So after this, after these two, so we'll now move on to another type which is line graph. So let's start. So for our lesson objective, we will represent organized data using a line graph. So uh, bawat video lesson natin dyan, so dinidiscuss ko kung ano ang appropriate na gamitin graph kada data. So, kapag ang tinutukoy natin is uh, portion, a uh, part of a whole, so meron siyang total, that is pie graph. Kapag naman kinocompare natin yung mga uh, data, yung mga categorical data, so we usually use bar graph. So, kapag line graph naman, i-discuss ko dito kung kailan, ko, so kung anong mga uh, variables, mga data ang ginagamitan ng line graph. So, let us now start our discussion by defining what is a line graph. So, when we say line graph, this is a type of graph used to represent changes in data over a period of time. So, dito pa lang po sa first statement niya, we have there the word changes. Ibig sabihin, pagbabago. Okay. So, usually, data are represented by points and are connected by line segments. So, kapag line graph po dito, makakakita kayo ng mga points. And then, yung mga points na yun, kinoconnect natin using line segments. Okay. So, yung mga line segments, ito po yung merong dalawang end points. So, yung dalawang points, kinoconnect niya. So, kaya nagiging line segment. So, data like changes in population, temperature, and profit can be represented by a line graph. So, yun lang po yung mga few examples na kung saan, na kung saan yung mga data uh, katulad niyan, so, population, temperature, and profit, pwede natin yan i-represent using a line graph. Like, for example, yung population. So, since yung population natin pabago-bago, maaring tumataas, bumababa on a certain uh, period of time, and then as well as yung temperature. So, maaring tumaas yung temperature, bumaba, pataas, bumaba. So, depende dun sa uh, temperature, syempre. So, pabago-bago po yan. So, walang temperature na pare-pareho lang. So, and then profit. Ibig sabihin yung kita. Like, for example, yung isang business. business. Hindi naman lagi yung kita niya is tumataas. May mga moments, may mga time na kung saan yung kanyang kita ay bumababa and then tataas ulit, bumababa or same lang. Okay, so, yan lang po yung mga examples ng data na pwede nating i-represent using line graph. So, in general, the horizontal axis is used as the time axis, and the vertical axis is used to show the changes in the other quantity. Okay, so, yung horizontal axis natin dito is yung uh, pahiga. So, usually, ang nilalagay po natin doon is yung time axis. Like, for example, kung population yan, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, and so on. Kapag naman temperature, maaring per hour. So, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. So, those are time axis. Pag naman profit, maari naman uh, month yan. January, February, March, April. So, ganun po yung mga time axis. And then, yung vertical axis, yung patayo, usually, pinapakita dyan yung mga pagbabago dun sa ibang quantity. So, one of the most important question that we need to answer is, how do we construct a line graph? So, paano nga ba tayo nagdodraw, gumagawa, magre-represent ng data using a line graph? So, first, we need to identify the variables. Okay, so, ayan. So, anong meron ba dun sa data? Like, for example, syempre, kung population, ayun. Population is one of the variables. Year, ayan. Days, week, ayan. So, usually, yung, yung isa sa mga variables dyan is yung time. 
and then next uh, determine the range of values okay so yan kapag ginagraph na natin yan kailangan natin kinoconsider yung kung gaano kalalayo kung ano yung mga agwat ng mga values and then after that we will determine a scale okay so yung scale na yan diniscuss ko na po yan dun sa ating video lesson 4 bar graph so kung gaano kahalaga ang magkaroon ng scale okay and then of course one important uh, factors that a graph should have is label. Okay, so kapag sinulat natin yung mga numbers sa horizontal and uh, vertical axis, it is important for us to, to label the graph. So, anong meron ba dun sa mga numbers na nilagay natin doon? Anong meron dun sa Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Ano yon? Next, after labeling the graph, that is the time that we plot the points and connect them. Okay, so syempre, uh, meron na tayong uh, mga data. So, ang gagawin lang natin is ipa-plot natin. So, syempre, bago natin yung i-plot, make sure na uh, nandun na yung scale, nakalagay na yung mga uh, 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 values, nakalabel na sila para hindi tayo malito. And then after that, i-coconnect lang natin yung points para makita natin kung yung, yung changes ba, pababa lagi ba, pataas, same lang ba. So, yun po kung ano, kung baga ano yung trend ng line, increasing ba or decreasing. Makikita natin yun kapag pinlat natin yung points, tsaka natin sila kinonect. And then finally, we will give the title of the graph. So, Isa din po yung importante kapag gumagawa tayo ng line graph. Kailangan nilalagyan natin ng title. Like for example, kung nire-record natin yung temperature in one week, pwede natin sabihin na daily recorded temperature for 7 days or for one week. Okay, so kapag population naman, population of barangay uh, San Pedro in 2010 to 2020. Okay, so yan po yung mga title. Make sure kapag naglalagay tayo ng title sa graph, appropriate. Ibig sabihin, akma. So, syempre, depende yun sa ating given data. Huwag natin lalagyan ng title na hindi naman suited, hindi naman akma dun sa ating given data. So, let us have an example. So, the table below shows the daily temperature in San Luis, recorded for 7 days in degree Celsius. So, represent the data using a line graph and answer the questions that follow. Okay, so, based po sa ating uh, statement, ayan. So, yung data natin is about the daily temperature. So, kung gaano kalamig o gaano kainit sa isang lugar. So, ayan, na naitala sa San Luis for 7 days. So, 7 days, 1 week yan. So, and then, naka-express yung ating data, yung ating temperature in degree Celsius. So, let us have the data. So, ayan. Meron tayong table dyan. We're in on the first column. Kung makikita nyo, ayan. So, yung ating mga nakatala dyan is yung days. Day 1 to 7. And then, the second column naman, yung ating mga recorded temperature. So, day by day. So, day 1 ang na-record na temperature is 24 degrees Celsius. Ayan, 29, 21, 27, 30, 26, and 27. So, yan lahat po ang mga na-record the temperature within 7 days. So, the first step that we need to do is to identify the variables. So, dyan, yung variables natin is yung day and temperature. Siyempre, habang ang araw is umuusad, Nag-iiba din po siyempre yung temperature. Iba-iba ang nagiging temperature natin araw-araw. So, meron, merong mga days na pareho yung natatala. Okay, depende po yan sa uh, araw. Okay, so kung ano man yung temperature ng nare-record sa loob ng isang araw. Next, determine the range values. So, ayan, titignan natin alin ba yung pinaka- uh, mababang temperature na naitala which is 21 degrees Celsius yung highest naman is 30 degrees Celsius okay, so yung ating range values ang gagawin lang natin pag susubtract natin yun so 30 minus 21 
that is 9. So, ganyan kalayo yung lowest dun sa highest recorded temperature. Pero kung mapapansin nyo naman yung ating mga recorded temperature is magkakalapit lang po sila. Hindi naman malayo ang kanilang agwat. Okay. Next, determine a scale. So, based po sa ating uh, data, yung scale natin is 4. So, why 4? So, hindi po kasi pwedeng 1 dahil mag start tayo sa 0 up to 30. Masyadong mahaba na yon. And then, kung by 2 naman, mahaba pa rin. So, I uh, decided to use 4. So, kung gusto nyo ng 5, pwede rin. So, usually yung scale natin dyan, um, halimbawa, kung 100 yung numbers, yung pinakamataas, 100. So, pwede tayong gumamit ng 10. Kapag naman 1,000, pwede tayong gumamit ng tigwa 100. So, depende po sa ating given data yung magiging scale natin. Siyempre, habang tumataas yung mga numbers, yung mga given data, so, siyempre, yung scale natin is tumataas din. Kung 1,000 yun, hindi naman tayo pwedeng gumamit ng 1 na scale. Kasi masyadong mahaba yun kung isusulat natin. 1,000 numbers yung isusulat natin dito sa ating vertical axis. Ayan. And then, yung ating mga days, ayan, nasa horizontal axis. Day, days 1 to 7. Mapapansin nyo. And then, on the next step, we will label the graph. Oh, so, ano ba yung mga numbers na nakasulat sa horizontal axis? Yung mga nasa baba. Ano naman yung mga nakasulat dito sa side, yung naka-vertical? Yung mga 0, 4, 8, 12, up to 36. So, sa una po, sa pinakaibaba, horizontal axis, yan po yung variable number 1 natin, is yung day. So, dyan po usually nakasulat, nakalagay yung ating time axis. So, yung time. Kaya tinawag siyang time axis din sa line graph. And then, sa vertical axis naman natin, syempre, temperature, uh, temperature yung mga yan, yung nakikita nyo yan, yung 0, 4, 8, 12, ayan. Temperature po yan, expressed in degree Celsius. Next, plot the points and connect them. So, yung mga data natin kanina, ipa-plot lang po natin dyan. Kung ano yung temperature sa day 1, day 2, day 3, up to day 7. So, sa day 1, ang naging temperature natin na inaitala is 24 degrees Celsius. So, itatapat lang po natin yung temperature sa day 1, syempre, tsaka dun sa nakuha nating temperature. Next, day 2 naman, we have 29 degrees Celsius. And then on the third day, we have uh, 21. On the fourth day, we have 27. On the fifth day, we have 30. And then on the sixth day, ang naitalang uh, temperature is 26. And then finally, on the seventh day, ang naitala is 27 degrees Celsius. Ayan, na-plot na po natin yung mga points. After that, i-coconnect natin sila. Mag magsimula dun sa day 1 up to day 7. So, ganyan lang po ang pag-connect. Mag-draw lang po tayo ng line. Line segments. So, ayan. Ito po yung ating point number 1, point number 2. Kaya, kinanek natin sila. So, line segment po yan. So, i-coconnect natin yan hanggang sa pinaka dulo. Ayan. So, ayan. Connected na po lahat yung ating points. So, ganyan po ang itsura ng ating line graph. Next. Final step natin is give the title of the graph. So, syempre, ano bang meron dito sa ating graph? So, kailangan meron siyang title. Okay. So, anong meron dyan? Pwede nating ilagay as the daily temperature in San Luis. Okay. The recorded temperature in San Luis for 7 days. Tandaan, kailangan akma or appropriate dapat yung title ng graph based sa ating data. So, like for example, ayan, temperature ang pinag-uusapan natin. Hindi naman natin pwedeng sabihin na population of San Luis for 7 days. Hindi naman population ng ating pinag-uusapan. Kundi, 
temperature. So let us answer the question. For the first question, what is the line graph about? So ibig sabihin yan, tungkol saan daw yung line graph? Anong meron sa line graph na nakikita nyo dyan? Yung naka-present. Naka, uh, okay, so the line graph is about the daily, temp the daily temperature recorded for the past, past 7 days in San Luis. So let us answer the second question. So what day has the coldest temperature? So ibig sabihin lang po yan, anong araw daw? yung naitala na pinaka, pinakamalamig yung uh, temperatura. So, ayan. Kitang-kita naman dyan. Ang araw na yon is day 3. Why day 3? It's because yung naitalang temperature is 21 degrees Celsius lang. So, yan po yung naitalang pinakamababa. Na maaring sabihin natin na pinaka uh, malamig. Uh, next naman, what day has the hottest temperature? So, kung meron tayong malamig, syempre meron din po tayong mainit. Okay, so yung pinakamainit na araw natin dyan is yung day 5. So, bakit day 5? Dahil ang recorded temperature natin during day 5 is 30 degrees Celsius. So, for the last question, what is the difference in temperature of day 3 and day 5? So, during day 3, ang naitalang temperature is 21 degrees Celsius. And then, dun sa day 5 naman, ang naitala is 30 degrees Celsius. So, para malaman kung anong difference sa temperature ng dalawang araw na yan, ang gagawin lang natin is, iso subtract. So, 30 degrees Celsius minus 21 degrees Celsius, that is 9 degrees Celsius. Okay, so yan po yung difference ng kanilang temperature. So, ayan, mapapansin natin ano yung trend ng temperature sa San Luis for the past 7 days. Ano siya, rising, then falling, rising, falling, rising. So, ganyan siya. Papainit. Palamig. So, ganun naman talaga ang panahon natin. So, mainit, malamig, malamig, mainit. So, depende po yan. So, for the next video lesson, we will represent organized data using a histogram in OJIBE. So, yung dalawa na yan, pinagsama ko na lang kasi connected naman sila. Okay, so, i-discuss ko po yan sa isang video lesson. Kasi isang uh, data lang po, isang example lang po ang gagamitin natin para mas maintindihan nyo po yung concept ng paggawa ng histogram tsaka ojibe. So that would be all. Thank you.